God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Welcome to Living Life. For two days, we have learned seven discipleship lessons that Jesus has taught to his 72 disciples. We found four lessons when Jesus sent out 72, and we learned three more when 72 disciples came back. Today, Jesus is giving answers to two important questions. The first question is, how do I inherit eternal life? The second question is, who is my neighbor? These questions deal with central issues of our Christian faith. Let's find out how Jesus replies to these two important questions in today's passage. Let's read today's passage and come back. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 42. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, As he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Welcome back to Living Life. I'm so excited about how Jesus answers these two questions. Let's get down to the point right away. Let's read verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? An expert in the law is a man who professionally teaches the Jewish religion. He has studied the entire Old Testament and knew all the Jewish traditions. Therefore, he must have been smart and arrogant. That's why Luke said he stood up to test Jesus, meaning while Jesus was teaching, he was standing up and asking questions to test Jesus. He didn't really want to know how to inherit eternal life. He thought he had already figured it out. Since he knows the scripture, he just wanted to test Jesus and trap him. On top of that, Uh, Look carefully the emphasis of his question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? His focus was on doing. Through his question, he can know, we can know that he believed that salvation is by works and deeds. You have to study the law diligently and keep the law, then you will be saved. Thus, he thinks he is the best candidate to inherit the eternal life because all he does Uh, day and night, full-time, is studying and keeping the law. How did Jesus respond to his first question? Let's read verses 26 through 28. 
What is written in the law? He replied, How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. Jesus knew this man was cocky and tried to test him. Jesus could have said, you are totally wrong, but he didn't. Jesus loved him. He still wanted to teach him. Therefore, Jesus stooped down to this man's level, and with this man's reasoning, Jesus gave, uh, gave the answer to him. Jesus says, uh, you are right. What is written in the law? Meaning, yes, salvation is written in the law, not anywhere else. Therefore, you are not far from the truth, since you are the expert of the law. The truth is not like Asian philosophy, which is very vague and uncertain. For instance, truth is not like wind or like air, like mountain is mountain, water is water. No, Jesus says clearly that truth is very precise and concrete. It is written down black and white in the Bible. Do you want the truth? Do you want to inherit the eternal life? Read the Bible. So then, what does the Bible say? The man said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, yes, you are right. If you do this, you will have the eternal life. Jesus is basically saying that the truth is in the Bible. Uh, the truth in the Bible should be lived out in our lives. When we love God and others with all our being, namely soul, mind, spirit, and strength, we can have the eternal life. Let me say again, we have to love God and our neighbor with all of our being, with all, our, all of our mind, with all our soul, with all our spirit, with all our strength. Who can do this? No one. We can love God and neighbor partially, but not with our entire being. Therefore, the answer to the first question is that we cannot inherit the eternal life by our doing. We can have the eternal life by trusting Christ who loved God and neighbor with all of his heart, his soul, and his mind and spirit and strength. Salvation is not by doing, but trusting what is done already. And Jesus gives a good example as he tells a story. Let's read verse 30. In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jericho to uh, Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Jesus said that a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. At that time, everyone knew that the road from Jerusalem to Jericho is very dangerous. It was rugged and rocky pass. Therefore, it was a favorite place for thieves and robbers. They could hide behind the rocks and rob people. Thus, people always travel as a group, not alone. But this man was so foolish and traveled by himself. No wonder he was attacked and beaten half dead. Many times when we see people suffering, we sympathize with them. But sometimes we criticize and say, how foolish is he? All these bad things are the consequences of his wrong and foolish choices and decisions. That's the way we rationalize ourselves and we end up not helping. Let's continue to read verses 31 and 32. A priest happened to be going down the same road and when he saw the man, he passed by on the, on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. A priest and a Levite, both religious people working for God, were passing by. They did not help this traveler. They loved the Lord their God. They were diligently working for God at the temple. So a priest and a Levite put their works, their church, religious ceremony before the needs of the desperate man. So they ended up not helping this man. How about you and me? We love God and we love our neighbor, don't we? We love, we love to go to church and worship God. We do QT every day. We join the small group meeting and let our friends know that we love them. But 
How about people who are outside of the church, outside of our family and friend circle? Don't we just blame social system, politicians, or victims because they have made bad choices in their lives? I always think myself that I'm not different from this priest and Levi. I love God and I do want to love the neighbors, but it is impossible for me to love God and neighbor with all of my mind, of uh, all of my soul and all of my spirit and all of my strength. That's the reason why we cannot inherit eternal life through our deeds, because we are not different from this priest and Levi. Let's continue to read verses 33 through 35. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took, took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. The priest and the Levite did not help this Jewish man, but there was a Samaritan who was passing by, saw that a Jewish man was suffering. He took pity on him and helped him. Do you know that Samaritan and Jews hated each other for centuries? They were arch enemies when Jesus, ex uh, uh, when Jewish people exiled. Uh, and came back from Babylon and tried to build a temple and resettle in Palestine. Samaritans opposed them ever since. They don't even talk to one another. They don't interact. But the Samaritans saw this suffering half that Jewish man and helped him. Moreover, the Samaritan took him to an inn and gave two denarii to innkeeper. Two denarii was worth for 24 to 48 days of room and board. This symbolizes a long-term and permanent care and love. Doesn't it sound very familiar? Yes, we were enemies of God because of our sin, and we are suffering so much because of the penalty of our sin. We were spiritually dead, but Jesus Christ, the good Samaritan, came to us and rescued us from our suffering and death. Who is our neighbor? It is Jesus Christ. We can pretend to be, or we can be a good neighbor in short amount of time, but not in long term. We can only be like the good Samaritan and act like Samaritan when Jesus Christ, the good Samaritan, comes into our heart. Then he will enable us, uh, gives us heart and strength to act like good Samaritan. Yes, only Jesus can do it. Only Jesus who is in us can do it. Let me finish today's QT with two questions. Is Jesus Christ the ultimate source of your salvation? Is Jesus Christ the ultimate source of your good works? Let's pray. Dear God, I want to live a good life, but I cannot do it by myself. I trust Christ as the ultimate source of my salvation and my works. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <music>